Hey everyone, so today I'm doing my Robin Hob video. I'm going to try my best not to make this super long. I want to like get right to the point on everything. Um, also, I will not be giving any spoilers, so that will kind of hopefully shorten the length of the video as well because I would hate to spoil anything for anyone. Um, but basically, I'm going to talk about each series within the larger realm of the Elderling series. I am going to give you the recommended reading order and then like my reading order. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna get started and hopefully this works out. Um, but basically I began reading Robin Hobb last summer, um, 2017, and I first heard about her books from Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings, and I'll link her channel down below. She's awesome, and I'm forever indebted to her for talking about this series. Um, so basically, um, we have the Large Realm of the Elderlings series and it's broken down into a couple trilogies and a quartet and there are short stories woven in between that are placed into different like fantasy collections. Um, and I have my computer over here so I'm just got a lot of notes. <laughs> um, I would say that this series overall has a slow beginning. Um, it is a very character driven series. So if you enjoy high fantasy, big, large, chunky, uh, interwoven fantasy series, then this is definitely for you. But if you need something that's like all plot or fast, uh, going and crazy knit, like this probably isn't for you, unfortunately. Um, but in saying that, I normally am a very, very plot driven person. Of course, I like to obsess and love characters and whatever, but I need plot to be happening. But for me to say this is one of my favorite series ever, but it's a strong character driven series, like that speaks a lot to me. Like that, that's a big deal to me. Um, but in these books, we are meeting characters that you see multiple times throughout these larger series. Um, you see a lot of character growth, you um, really get attached to them and the decisions they make and the relationships that they are forming between each other. It's an extremely emotional ride um, and there's a lot of really sad and difficult parts in this novel but you're on this journey for I think we're spanning 20, 30, 40 years. I mean like it's a long time. Um, but it's it's a wonderful read and I and I know I hear a lot of people say that they read the very first book and they aren't interested because it's not like fast paced, it's not exciting. And the first book starts off and we're following the main character Fitz who I think he's about nine when we first start. So and it, it's hard for a lot of adults to relate to a nine year old child. Um, but I feel if you get through the first book and the second book and you're still no, then maybe it's not for you. Um, but of course, I love it, so I'm just going to start uh, talking about the first trilogy, which is the Farseer trilogy. In this, we have Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest. I'm trying to be really delicate because I don't want my camera to fall. Um, but in this trilogy, uh, we are following Fitz Chivalry Farseer. He is a bastard of the King's Son, or the King in wait Waiting. Um, he's a, a trained assassin within the kingdom called the Six Duchies, um, and he is sent to be raised by Burrich, who is um, the stable master. So basically, nobody wants anything to do with him really, but they know that he could possibly inherit the throne one day, so they just give him to the stable master. Um, but Fitz develops a bond and a relationship with the king, King Shrewd. Um, and he promises King Shrewd that he will be a king's man. He will always be there for him. He is loyal, you know, ride or die, as the children say. Um, but he is then sent to Ch Shade, who is a skilled assassin. So he's the king's assassin. And Shade is to train uh, Fitz how to be the next royal assassin. Uh, during this time, Prince Verity, uh, he is battling... So King Shrewd's son uh, is battling against 
the Red Ship Raiders who are attacking the six duchies. Now the Red Ship Raiders, they are attempting to turn people into what is known as forged ones. Um, the, it's kind of like a, it's almost like they're like a possession thing, like they're changed I, somehow. It's, there's a lot to it and I don't want to I'm being really careful with what I'm spoiling, um, or not, I'm not spoiling anything, but I'm being really careful to not spoil anything. Um, while all this is happening, Verity's brother, Regal, uh, is attempting to destroy the six duchies. Um, so people in this world can either have the wit or the skill, and the wit is the ability to bond with animals, like, more intensely than just, like, oh, my best friend, my puppy, my best friend. Um, they're more than just pets. They share thoughts and pain and emotions. Um, but then on the other side, you also have the skill and that is for the ability for people to share uh, thoughts with each other. Uh, they can share their power and their energy um, and basically communicate with one another. And so we've got the politics going on with the six duchies trying to be protected from the red ship raiders and then we also have the other prince who is trying to um take over basically so we have an evil prince and then regular politics going on in this overall world and we are following fitz as he grows up through these few years um and is trying he's trying to find his place in the world because again he's a bastard he has no family except for his uncles and his grandfather um but he is a bastard and is the assassin so basically he just has to do assassiny things and yeah that's that's where we start with the farseer trilogy the next trilogy is the live ship traders trilogy this starts about a couple years after um, the final book in um, the Farseer trilogy. So a few years after Assassin's Quest, we have Ship of Magic, the Mad Ship, and then Ship of Destiny. Um, and in this world, uh, well basically, okay, let me start again. You can read the Live Ship Traders, these three books, separate from everything, and they can be their own series and be done. You can read these three and be done. Um, if you like strong female characters and a lot of female leads and um, like women kind of, not defying their roles, but um, taking on men's roles and being these strong figures in their community and in the world, like th these are really fun books. Um, and I like a lot of the characters. And like I said, we see a lot of character growth with these characters throughout these three books. This series takes place in Jamelia and Bingtown and the Pirate Isles. Um, these are all areas that are south of the Six Duchies. Um, the war in the north with the Red Ship traders and everything has affected their trade in this series. Um, and the trade in Bingtown uh, that's been affected, it's like their way of life. That's how people survive, that's how they make money, that's how they get food, like everything is surrounded by this trade. Um, and basically a live ship is a sentient ship. Uh, the live ships are used to also explore the Rain Wild River. Um, these are the only ships who can handle that river um, and traders like to use them to train with the Rain Wild traders who I'll get to a little bit later, um, but they are another group or region of people who have goods and things that like and nobody else can get. Like they have them specifically and this has to do with magic and things like that. Um, but in these books, mostly we're following Althea. Um, she's a young woman and she uh, doesn't conform to the societal norms like I was speaking about. Um, she wants to follow, follow in her father's footsteps and become a trader and captain his ship that he leaves behind. Um, she wants to travel, and but she feels like society is um, against her. They think, obviously, that she should just, like stay home and be married and let her husband or whoever go off and trade and adventure. Um, but in this series, we're getting a lot of pirates. We get sea serpents. Um, what else? There's still more politics with the trading and whatnot. We get slave rebellions because there are slaveries in this this series and um there is like mutinies uproars uh and then in the series also we get the reemergence 
of dragons, which we do touch on a little bit in the Farseer trilogy, um, but they are much more prominent in these three books. Um, but like I said, you can read this trilogy separate. Um, it's one of my favorites of the series, If, but it's hard because my favorite characters are in other trilogies within the series. Um, but I would really recommend these ones. I always hear a lot of people raving about this series particularly. Um, and it does let you explore more of the larger realm of the Elderlings world and it lets you um, get back into more of the magic and the dragons and how things work. Um, but that's all I'll say about the Live Ship Traders trilogy. After the Live Ship Traders trilogy, they, we have the Tawny Man trilogy and this is like 10 to 15 years um, since the first trilogy, the Farseer trilogy but only like five years after the Live Ship Traders trilogy. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> but we have Fool's Errand, The Golden Fool, and Fool's Fate. Um, so in these three books, we are back to following Fitz Chivalry Farseer and his um, adventures. <laughs> So you have to read the Farseer trilogy prior to reading the Tawny Man trilogy or none of it will make sense. Um, this is taking place, it's after the Red Ship War and we're seeing a lot of the witted versus the non-witted people. Um, so the people who are witted and can speak to animals are really looked down upon. They're compared to animals. They are basically almost like thought of as animals because people think that they have um, this, since they have this connection, people feel that they're animalistic. And it is true that if you connect with a beast uh, too closely, you can start to take on their characteristics. So in this we have people being hunted down and killed and threats against the witted people by the non-witted people. What, you know, like, it's like a hate crime, basically. They hate them because they're different, because they don't know, um, they don't understand, and, you know, we fear what we don't know. So um, that's kind of what's going on during this trilogy, as well as political issues between the Out Islanders and Buckkeep, like the main central town. Um, but again, I don't wanna spoil anything, so I can't say too much, but you must read Farseer before the Tawny Man. Um, you can skip the Mad Ship series and go from the Farseer straight into Tawny Man. Um, I, I think you would be okay with that if you love this, the characters in the first three books in the Farseer trilogy and you just want to stick with them and find out what happens. My recommendation though, my reading recommendation, I'll probably go over this again later, is to read these in order like the larger novels the series just read them all and read them all in order that's that is my recommendation but um the next book that i would recommend reading is actually i believe label labeled 0.5 so the very beginning of this whole entire series and that would be the willful princess and the piebald prince um, it's a novella, so it's super short, but in this we are learning about the history of the witted people. So, um, why they connect to animals, how it works a little more about that, where it um, started, the politics behind it, why people began to hate them, things of that sort. I loved this little story. It was really fun to read. Um, I won't say much else, but basically it's just like, it's just giving you more information about the world. Um, but I would recommend reading this after the Tawny Man trilogy. Um, I feel like you get a lot of information in the Tawny Man trilogy and like this kind of just connects the dots. So your options are read this before you read anything else, which I would not recommend, um, or read it after the Tawny Man trilogy, which I think those would be the best options. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm obviously not Robin Hobb, but I really enjoyed reading this after Tawny Man. The next in the uh, reading order, I don't think I have these in order, yes I do, um, is the Rainwild Chronicles, so Dragon Keeper, Dragon Haven, City of Dragons, Blood of Dragons uh, is the order that it goes in, and basically 
you could read this series as a completely separate series but again I wouldn't recommend it I would recommend reading them all because you're gonna miss a lot of fun connections in this series that um, you wouldn't know about not having read the other novels in this one we're really focusing on dragons and their return to the world so they've been gone for years and years uh, hundreds of years prob I think since um, before like the Farseer the first trilogy um, so basically we're following them and their dragon keepers um, we're following Thymara who is a rain wilder and she leaves her home uh, to help the dragons return to the elderling city known as Kelsingra and basically that's where they will live that's where they'll flourish and be able they'll be able to mate and just survive basically uh, Thymara and the others they uh, use live ships to travel down this river to get the dragons to Kelsingra and as dragon keepers they're just uh, responsible for making sure they eat, making sure they're healthy, making sure they're clean, and they're just going that they survive the trip and get to Kelsingra safely. The dragons are uh, being hunted actually. There's some political things going on in this book as well, um, but dragon blood has uh, immense healing properties and so there is a sick uh, duke who is hunting the dragons. He wants to basically eat them because he wants to heal and um, these dragon keepers and the rain wilds, these people want them to survive and have, you know, a fruitful life and just be the powerful beings that they are. The final trilogy uh, is the Fits in the Fool trilogy, and then we have Fool's Assassin, Fool's Quest, and Assassin's Fate. Um, we are revisiting characters from the Farseer trilogy and the Tawny Man trilogy. So you have to read the Farseer trilogy and the Tawny Man trilogy prior to these books. But again, read them all because in this final trilogy, we really get everything coming together. We are starting to see characters from the Live Ship series, which is completely separate from the Tawny Man and the Farseer trilogy, but now they're in the Fits in the Fool series. So uh, even the Rainwild uh, Chronicles series, everything is coming together now. And if you don't read um, the Live Ship Traders and the Rainwild Chronicles, the uh, Fits in the Fool series, it's still readable. Uh, I wouldn't say it'd be confusing, but you'd be missing out on a lot of things. Um, I like when books are making a lot of connections or you kind of like you see little things that you wouldn't pick up on if you hadn't read other books. Um, so again, I would recommend just reading them all in order. Uh, I think you're gonna obviously have ups and downs with what you like and what you're enjoying and the pacing and whatever. Um, but I think to get the most out of the final series, you need to have read all the other novels. So finally, we have the short stories. Um, I already mentioned the Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince. Um, it is recommended that this is the very first book, but I would recommend reading it after the Tawny Man trilogy. Other short stories, um, I believe all these short stories could be read whenever. Um, I'll tell you when I think, not when I think you should read them, but I'll let you know like when they take place in the world um, so you can get an idea of when you want to read them. And of course all of this is online, different places, um, but I really feel if you've made it through um, the first three trilogies, so if you read Farseer, Live Ship, and The Tawny Man, you're game to read uh, all of these short stories after that whenever you want it's no big deal so the first one is cats meat um, it is located in the inheritance and other stories by Robin Hobb and Megan Lindholm uh, Robin Hobb is Megan Lindholm she just writes different things under different names um, so we have cats meat which I believe you can read whenever you like um, and then we also have the inheritance which I would wait to read after the live ship series and then we have Homecoming, which I would also wait to read after the Live Ship series. The next story is Her Father's Sword, which is um, located in the Book of Swords. It's like an anthology. I'll put a picture up here. 
um, and like information down below. I would not read this one until after the Farseer trilogy, um, but it is it's taking place during the book Royal Assassin or within that time frame. The next one is Blue Boots, which is located in Songs of Love and Death. Again, I'll put a picture up here, information down below. Um, this is just some information about minstrels. Um, and minstrels uh, play a really important role in the society. They witness important things. They uh, tell stories. They uh, are kind of like record keepers, like oral record keepers, and they perform. They're there for entertainment, but they're also there for other necessary means. Um, I think that you can read this one whenever. It does take place during Assassin's Apprentice, but um, once you get a few books in, it's it's just like a fun short story. The last one I'm going to speak about is Words Like Coins. This is located in a fantasy medley. Um, again, link or information down below. Um, this takes place during Assassin's Apprentice time, um, but this is another one, again, I think that you can read whenever, as long as you've got a few books under your belt, you'll understand what's going on, and it's just more information on the world, just another fun short read. So that is my Robin Hobb video. As of right now, I have almost 30 minutes of footage, so ugh, um, but basically, I will leave a lot of information down below. I will put my reading order recommendation as well as like the official um, order of the books and the stories. Um, and thank you if you watched all this and please let me know if you pick up Robin Hobb and apologies in advance if you do and you hate it. Like, I'm really worried about that. Like I'm really worried that I'm hyping this up and nobody's gonna like it or whatever or apologies. I'm sorry if you don't like it, but I love it. I hope you love it too. If you have questions or comments down below, let me know if you are already a Robin Hobb fan or if you've read like other series by her. I'm going to be devouring everything that woman ever freaking writes. So um, I, I would love to meet her. Like she's on my author, like would love to meet list. But yeah, so I appreciate you watching this video if you've made it this far. I'm surrounded by books and my throat hurts. Um, but I hope I did a good job. I know the farther I got in the series, I kind of stopped explaining things, but I'm really scared of spoilers and a lot of the um, magic and the different people and towns, like it's really fun to learn about them. So I don't want to give you all the information before you go into them. But again, my favorite, one of my favorite fantasy series of all time, one that I will revisit throughout my life multiple times. Um, Fitz will forever be one of my favorite characters ever. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of him in the first book, but now um, I love him. He's one of my favorites. I recently finished the final book. I want to say uh, it was only less than a week ago now. Um, but I, I, I cried when it was over. It was kind of like, whoa, what do I do now? Um, but what do you do now? Uh, you reread it. You make a 30 minute video about it and then you reread it. Um, but thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next video.